Hello again viewers, welcome back to Charlie's House Call Auto Repair. Today we're going to be working on a 2005 Lexus ES330. We've already got the car up on jack stands, got the wheels off of it. And we sprayed a couple things in here with some penetrating oil. We're going to be replacing this power steering rack today. Bolts are fairly accessible. You know, the steering's, all of the linkage is right there. So the hardest part's gonna be getting this out from underneath the uh, sway bar. But, uh, yeah, definitely gonna have a little fun with this. All right, well, we've got the cotter pin out of here. We've got the nut loosened up, taken off, turned around. Go get a big hammer and knock that up and out with. That did it. Cool. We'll top back down so we can get the nut off of it. So that's not working. to pull this uh, mount right here out. Pull this stud right here out of here so we could lift the motor up. Get the back of the motor lifted up high enough that I could get in there with the breaker bar and start loosening up that bolt. got the uh, sway bar links disconnected so we can lift the sway bar up and out of the way get it all the way up and out of the way and now uh, we bought ourselves a lot more room to get in here and work can move.
head of the bolt somewhere in here. see it but I can feel it and I can't get at it because you're in the way is now unbolted both sides on the bottom now we got to do the uh, drain it out and disconnect the uh, steering hoses and linkage on the other side the steering linkage up off the rack disconnect that set that off to the side just make sure you don't turn it well we got the rack out got the new rack next to it to compare we got everything out of here we need to get uh, two new o-rings so we can put the uh, lines back in the new rack start installing the new rack hello again YouTube we're heading back over now to the 2005 uh, Lexus ES 330 we're gonna be putting the power steering rack the new one in we uh, were held up waiting for these right here there's your part number this uh, cross references let me get my notes here just to play it safe Make sure I get the right numbers for you guys. This crosses to a couple of different part numbers. Uh, da, 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 that's not it. That's not it. That's that's it right there. Okay. You're looking up in the uh, power steering reference in the manual that contains the Toyota parts. You'll be coming across 44410G as in Gulf or 444. 16D is in dog. Uh, both of those O rings cross reference to again this part number right here, and all we are after is these two little O rings right here. Because whenever you're dealing with power steering lines or hydraulic lines or power steering racks, anything of the sort, and there's O rings in there, if those O rings aren't soft and perfectly pliable and completely round, they're damaged. And as a general rule of thumb, you never ever reuse an o-ring unless you really like searching down leaks and doing it over again so let's get that rack in
I've seen a great number of tips for securing the steering wheel. And being that I have some painter's tape floating around. Just clean enough that this tape will hopefully stick. I'll just put this tape right across the top of the steering wheel, make sure it's nice and straight. The tape right down. Okay, somebody siliconed the column, so that's a fail. All right, let's try idea number two. I'm take a box. Uh, let's see. Steering column all the way up. Jam the box underneath. And then, just to tighten it up some more, pull the column down. That'll lock the steering wheel. Won't turn. Now we can go ahead and install that rack. Now the game plan here is to just take the rack and literally just walk it right in from this side and hopefully get it all the way down into all of its mounts over there and right here and then there'll be just enough room in there to get the uh, power steering lines hooked up and let's see if I can get you in here and there's their uh, steering mechanism let's get the there it is, that we've got to connect it to the top of the rack. We could probably assume that this steering rack is straight, centered, but you go ahead and put it in, you bump it around, something like that, and you're going to end up off center. We want to first start off with just making sure that this thing is absolutely centered first. Get the, out of the bag, I'll try to do this. Diagonally on the cardboard in a second. Keep that on there for now. That way, there we don't get this dirty. All right. Now, I spent a good amount of time searching online trying to figure out different methods of centering a rack. And years and years ago, when I started doing racks, somewhere around in here there would usually be a small bolt. And what that bolt did was it went through a hole and it locked into the rack and it kept the rack in, the, in an absolute center. Uh, you could use that as an advantage for when you were doing your install, providing, of course, that you could get the bolt out afterwards. Otherwise, you'd have to remove the bolt. And it, it didn't really, I don't know, I'm not really sure how, but it would lock that, that rack. So now you remove that bolt and you're good to go. This doesn't come with any kind of a locking mechanism. And it has a little reference mark right here up on the top. I'll zoom in on that for you. That This little reference mark right here, I'm assuming, is for center. We're going to make sure, and yeah, I know you guys are seeing the vice grips going, no, 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 don't do that. Take the, the vice grips, this nut, you know, the, your finger nut directly above the directly above your mark and just gently wiggle it around let the jaws of the vice grips go into the grooves of the rack now once we're satisfied that our vice grips are locked on our center point I'm going to rotate it one full turn and one and three quarters that way so we're going to come back one and three quarters now we're going to go the other way one, one half, and it stops. We stopped at one and a half. That means this rack was not centered. So it's a good thing we double checked this. So, if we come back up here to where the center mark was, we went one and three quarters this way and one and a half that way. So let's double check. One, one half, three quarters, lock. Okay, go the other way, one half, one, one half, lock. And lock is all the way over there. So, we know that our artificial center that we started with is not the actual center. So how do we get it to center? Now we can do a little math and learn, you know, figure out how much, which way to shift this. 
but if I remember correctly, it was one and three quarters this way, which is a quarter of a turn more than that. So we just turn this one eighth of a turn. That should put us right on center. So we're going to take that as the center. We're going to come back up here again. Get our vice grips gently situated to where we believe our new center is. And then we'll repeat the process. One, one quarter, one half, and so one half is 180, 210, all the way back to center, and repeat the other way. There's one, one half, and there's our lock. So now we know where the actual center is. And we're going to set this back down, get this straight up and down. I've already moved the cover over onto this. What we're going to do now is if I can find my white paint pan is I'm just going to put a little mark on here just to make sure that we don't knock it out of place while we're putting it in. All right, now before I go stuffing this thing into the car, I want to show you the, the, those little marks. There's one on each side. And I noticed, maybe it's coincidence, I don't know, but that bolt and that bolt. If you make these line up with this, I'll bet you that'll put your rack on center for you. So, we're going to take the rack, leave your caps on it, in case you bump things like that, and then slowly work it in, and get it across the mount, work it all the way into the other side, underneath the sway bar this is where it gets really difficult and tricky because you got to lift it up and get it past the sway bar and rotate it back and set it in place but you got to get it up in the air at the same time if you're doing this by yourself probably be easier with with a helper you're slow and gentle and careful with it. Now, rotate it a little more. Make sure you don't lose the cover on the top of the rack. Make sure your linkage is already over near where it needs to be. Now we just need to work it down into the mount and this part can be kind of tricky it might take some banging it around and okay we're almost down low enough to where we can put the bolt into it and to tell you guys the truth I don't know how we're all gonna fit underneath here but what we're trying to do now is we're gonna get up here and put the bolt in from behind but we need to line that hole up so what I'm going to use is a regular screwdriver. See, I can I can work it in this way. I can move it around, push up on it, use that to pry it down, or I can rotate it this way and work it that in that way. So now we got that bolt hole a little bit better. Now we can attempt to get the bolt in from behind. All right, now we can go ahead and put that bolt back in. We can find the angle to get in. That's one in. Now where'd the nut go? Alright. Hmm, that's gonna be fun.
This is a new trick. Now make sure that when you, you notice when you take the bolts out, you're doing the uh, the bolt from behind. repeat on the other side the screwdriver to pry the rack back up bolt started in there otherwise you're not up high enough See if we can get it in from the back side. Well, we're not there yet. Not on that one. All right. Now make absolutely sure that your little mark right here, a little mark right there, lines up with the bolts. You can see these from above. This is the uh, seal that came off of the other rack, just to keep debris from getting down into the main seal. Now we're gonna grab this yoke and pull down on it. We're gonna assume the steering wheel does not move. And rack that right down on it. Now, before pushing it all the way down on and making it any tighter and fighting with it, wiggle it around a little bit see if we can get it a little further on its own all right it went down all the way on its own okay cool okay now before we go and tighten anything up let's double check the steering wheel make sure the steering wheel actually is centered all right we'll put the key in the ignition turn that to unlock it car's deader than the doornail battery's completely flat dead pull the box out from underneath We'll have to figure out why that's dead soon. Okay. One. One turn. One and a quarter. One and a half. One and three quarters. Or, well, almost one and three quarters. One and... One, two, three, four, five. Five eighths. Back. And go the other way, one and a quarter. All right. All right. So now we get to go tighten the bolt, put the pinch bolt in, tighten that up, and remove the tie rod ends off of the old rack and get them measured up and onto the new rack. And a little bit of uh blue thread locker on there just to play it safe. Right, get up in here. Thread it all the way down in. Now 
Now with a little quarter inch drive wrench, that's about as tight as I can get it with one hand. This is the driver side. We're going to go, let's see, one, two, three, 13, 14, 15, eh, a little bit more than 15 turns. We're going to go put it on the other side of the car now. Over on this side, let's see, pull the blue thing off. We're more than 15 turns in on that nut, so let's go ahead and take our driver's side tire out end and thread this on. 15 turns, it starts to catch right there. And we said it was a little more than 15 turns. So let's make sure we're started here. Okay, now we'll count in the 15 turns. One, two, three, 13, 14, 15. Now this is not absolutely critical. And these were actually facing downward. So we're gonna pull it back half a turn. Spin the nut out. And now we can go ahead and set this down inside the the wheel. And repeat on the other side. Tie rod and nut. That screwed on. Cotter pin for it. Gently tap it down again. Everything is a hammer. And tightening. Yep. Event like this, it might not be tightening. Yeah, this one here is not tightening, it's just spinning. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a bar and I'm just going to put some downward pressure on that. Bar from the jack works just good. I'll get that down in there, get that into the hole of the frame. The control arm, push down on it. Is that doing the trick? No, that's not. Oh dear. Alrighty. Hmm. I don't really want to try railing that in with the impact because I don't want to heat it up or spin the boot. But we have to. Maybe this will do it. Maybe this one won't. So let's combine that with some pressure. And just have a nice little sit, seat right on that bar. Might be time for a new battery as well. And park my butt on this again. Maybe that did it. Yeah, it looks looks like it might have. Oh yeah, that did it. I'm gonna get my breaker bar, pull that just enough to get it to the next little notch so I can put the cotter pin in. Almost 
there. Almost. There it is. I'm gonna put the cotter pin back in. Adjustment on the toe when we're all done. I'm gonna leave this nut loose for the time being. Get under here, torque these mounting bolts down. Do the same thing on the other side. Cool.